All right, this is one of our concluding videos in section 16.3, which is considering the fundamental theorem of line integrals. Okay, so in a previous video, we have shown that if the vector field f is the gradient of some function phi called a potential function, okay, then this implies that we know that the first entry of the vector field is phi sub x oops, sorry, phi sub x, and that the second entry of the vector field is the derivative of the function with respect to y. So if the vector field is the gradient of some function phi, okay, meaning that, that in, as a synonym, that the vector field f is what is called conservative, okay, if the vector field is conservative, then we also know, as a follow-up condition, then we also know that f1y, the partial derivative of the first entry of the vector field with respect to y, is equal to f2x. Okay, so if the vector field is conservative, it is also true that f1y is equal to f2x. Okay, so this was our test for whether or not a vector field was conservative. Okay. But just because this test is passed does not tell you actually what the potential function is, okay? And I just wanted to, to make note of that statement. Just because f, if f is conservative, if f is equal to the gradient of phi, because f1y is equal to f2x, we still don't know what that function phi is, okay? Just because there is a function doesn't mean that we know what it is. So in this video, we are going to find a formula for the potential function, okay? And we're gonna make the assumption that the, there is a potential function, so we're gonna assume that it is known that f1y is in fact equal to f2x, okay? And by finding this potential function, this means that what we're going to do is we are going to solve, we're going to solve the equation, this system of what is called partial differential equations. Okay? And what we're assuming here is that you know F1 and you know F2. And what we're trying to do is to solve the equation, the derivative of the function phi with respect to x is equal to this known function. And it's also known that we know f2. And we want to solve for phi. Okay, So the goal is to solve for phi, the potential function. Okay. Now, one way to do that is to select one of these equations and to basically get rid of the derivative, the partial derivative. And one way to do that would be to integrate the derivative with respect to x to a partial antiderivative. And therefore, you would antidifferentiate f1 also. Okay. So this tells us that when you integrate the derivative, we get the potential function phi of x comma y is equal to the integral of f1 dx. Now we know that when we integrate, we also get a constant. But because of the partial integration nature, we also know that this constant is not just a constant, but it is a function, actually a function of y and I will represent that as g of y. Okay, So at this point we know that the potential function, which is not unique, okay, there's uh, in physics there is always a, a potential, you have to set your ground, you have to know where you're measuring the potential from. It's the potential difference that is measurable. Uh, here we have f, the integral of f1 dx plus some function of y. And we are now in the business of trying to figure out what that function of y is equal to. Okay? 
So one way to do this would be to then take this thing and to, equation that we know to be true and then to take the derivative with respect to y of it. So phi sub y will be the derivative with respect to y of this integral f1 dx plus the derivative of g with respect to y, we'll call that g prime of y. Now, please be careful that this integral and this derivative don't cancel each other out because this is integration with respect to x and this is differentiation with respect to y. Okay, so here we have an equation for phi sub y. But phi sub y, right, according to where we were starting from, we know what phi sub y is equal to. That is the second entry of the vector field. Okay, so we know that F2 Okay, let me just write this down real quick. We know that F2 is equal to the partial with respect to Y of the integral of F1 dx plus G prime of Y. Okay, so let's add another page here and we'll pick this, pick this up. We know that F2, phi sub Y, was equal to the derivative with respect to Y of the integral of F1 dx plus G prime at Y which tells us that g prime at y is equal to f2 minus the partial derivative with respect to y of the integral of f1 dx. Okay, now I'm gonna consider, I'm gonna, so I don't have to keep writing this quantity, I'm gonna call this percent symbol, just a symbol that is that without me having to rewrite it. Okay, and then we can now see that g prime at y is equal to percent symbol. And therefore, if you want to solve for g of y, which was our secondary goal, we can now see that g of y is the integral of percent symbol with respect to y. And this tells us that our potential function phi of x comma y is equal to the integral of f1 with respect to x plus this function g of y, which is the integral of percent function dy, where percent symbol is equal to f2 minus partial with respect to y integral of f1 dx. So here is our formula for the potential function. We have essentially used both pieces of information. We've used that phi sub x is equal to f1, and we use that phi sub y was equal to f2, and we solved these equations to get this formula for phi. Okay, what is an important thing to note here is that it came down to g prime at y is equal to percent symbol so that we could just integrate it with respect to y. Okay. Now, what the key to this whole thing was that g prime at y, as I've stated here, is only a function of, it's only a function of y and not a function of x. If it was a function of x, when we integrated, we'd also have to add in, you know, a constant again. And this constant could be a function of, um, also with respect to x. So we didn't want to have that case. We just want this constant to be a plain old constant. So g prime at y only needs to be a function of y. Now how can we how can we prove this kind of to close the loop that g prime of y was only a function of y? Notice that when you take the derivative with respect to x of g prime at y or you take the derivative with respect to x of percent symbol, right? That when you take the derivative of percent symbol, you get f2x minus the derivative with respect to x, the derivative with respect to y of the integral of f1 dx. Okay. But because partial derivatives reverse their order of integration, uh, reverse the order of computing them, 
the derivative with respect to x and then the derivative with respect to y can switch orders of integration. Oh, they can switch the order. Sorry, let me unlock my screen here. Oh, I've got the world's worst password. It's too long. Okay, so right here we can switch this order of differentiating and then the integral with respect to x and the derivative with respect to x cancel and then you're left with only a derivative with respect to y of f1. But remember where we started from, we uh, knew or saying that if f2x minus f1y were equal to each other, we could then find a potential function. And so right here, if we know that f2x and f1y are equal, then we know that this is equal to zero. And that tells us that percent symbol was a constant with respect to x. If you take the derivative of something and you get zero, you know that percent symbol is a constant with respect to x, which means that percent symbol was only a function of y. And that is why we are done with this formula for phi sub y. Okay, So we now know that our potential function is this formula up to plus a just plain old constant k. Okay? So if we implement this formula, okay, let me see. Here is, okay, let's go through that potential function formula here on this example. So here is the vector field we've looked at in the past couple videos. So we know that f1 is equal to 2xy, and we know that f2 is equal to x squared minus 1. Okay, so what we know is that the potential function, the first thing to do is to integrate f1 with respect to x. Okay, and when you integrate with respect to x, you get x squared y. Okay, but we also know that we need to uh, add on to that function a function of y, and the function of y is found by integrating the percent symbol with respect to y. Okay, but percent symbol was the integral of f1 dx. Okay, it was f2 minus the integral we just found, which is x squared y. But f2 is equal to x squared minus 1. Uh, one second here. Oh, sorry. Percent symbol was the, oh, sorry, was the f2 minus the derivative, sorry, was the de minus the derivative of that function with respect to y that we just found from this first integral. So we will get percent symbol is x squared minus 1 minus the derivative of this function with respect to y is x squared. And so percent symbol is equal to x squared minus 1 minus x squared, which is equal to negative 1. And therefore, when you find g of y, you will need to integrate this function with respect to y. And as promised, here we're seeing only we're we're seeing no no x's in this formula. Okay, so when you integrate negative one with respect to y, you get negative y, which tells us that the potential function phi of x comma y is equal to the integral of f1 with respect to x, which is x squared y, minus, sorry, plus the function of y, which is equal to negative y. And that is where this potential function is coming from. Okay? So in the next video, I'll show you another way to, um, to 
uh, maybe get at the potential function a bit easier but as it stands this is the formula we have for the potential function okay so essentially what you do you take the first entry of the vector field integrate it with respect to x that is step number one okay once you get that answer for the integral of f1 with respect to x your second step is to take the partial derivative of that thing you just found with respect to y okay and then do f2 minus that answer and then that will give you percent symbol and then the last thing you do the third step is to integrate percent symbol with respect to y and add the two results add the answer from step one and from step three together and that will give you a potential function okay and that potential function is a potential function up to some number constant k but what we are going to see with the fundamental theorem of line integrals is that it is the potential difference that matters and this constant k will end up canceling out.